This week, Tableau is about to showcase their new vision for Tableau for the future. And I think when a company does this, it's important to set the context and compare that vision to what other people are doing in the space at the moment. Now, you can obviously go ahead and do that with tools like Power BI, but actually I think it's also important to contextualize that with what new entrants to the space are doing. Sigma Analytics is one of those companies. You might have seen them at Tableau Conference doing a little bit of uh, guerrilla marketing. But nonetheless, I, I don't often spend time talking about these tools because I've not used them and I don't have enough experience to be able to talk to them from a point of authority. But in the case of Sigma, I happen to be able to call Katrina Mene, a colleague of mine at Aimpoint Digital. She's also the author of a book about Sigma. So she knows a lot about Sigma. But here's the unique thing. Katrina herself started her analytics journey on Tableau. And so she actually found Sigma having come from the data fam, as it were, having been part of user groups and having used Tableau and, you know, gotten frustrated with certain aspects that she didn't quite connect with. And so in Sigma, she found something that she could call a little bit more familiar, but more importantly, she's able to talk about both products, I think in a balanced way. And so I spent over an hour and a half with her talking about Tableau and Sigma, but mostly about Sigma. She showed me all the way through the software, showed me some things that are really easy to do in Sigma, but also highlighted the things she misses about Tableau. We had a great discussion. I really encourage you to watch it. As ever, there's timestamps so you can jump to the bits that you like. And more importantly, if you're on LinkedIn, you'll find the link in the comments. And if you're on YouTube, you're already here. As ever, let's get stuck in. Katrina, how are you doing? I'm doing well, Tim. How are you? Good, good. Thank you. Thank you for joining me. Um, I think we, we set this up roughly a month ago because um, I started my journey with Sigma, right? And so mm -hmm. um, we'll come to this, obviously, as we talk more about your experience, but you've heard this a hundred times before people always say you wrote the book on sigma so <laughs> when when yes. we set this up i was like this is perfect you know katrina can come on the channel and talk to the tableau family the data families they like to call it about mm -hmm. sigma um but before we get into all of that um first let's maybe start with an introduction of yourself um i'll kind of let you do, do your own introduction tell people who you are and sort of um yeah what you do yeah, I am Katrina Many. I live in Minneapolis, Minnesota with my husband and three dogs. Um, I started with a really heavy Excel background in, in my career. And then I like moved into data visualization after I had like, um, I'd automated my entire team's whole week job down to a 20 minute <laughs> macro. And I was like, oh, okay, okay, this is the cool stuff. This is the, yeah. the power of, of data and data automation. Um, and then that led me to, uh, to a, a role where I wanted to learn more about data visualization and I found Tableau and I realized that I did not know a whole lot about Tableau yet. So I started right. working or trying to connect with other, other users like yourself in the uh, data community. And mm -hmm. I became really active in the Tableau, the local Tableau community. And then that kind of led me to, to the jobs that I have, have now. Amazing, amazing. So like two important things you mentioned there. Um, firstly, three dogs. What are the breeds of your dogs? <laughs> Obviously, yeah. like we're dog people yeah, here. Of so course. First thing we ask dogs. is what are the breeds? Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I've got two labs and one German pincher. So he's like okay. a 30 pound Doberman kind of. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amazing. I've got a Hungarian Vistler, so only the one. Um, I'm about to have three kids. So I think I think we balance out three dogs. Balance, yeah. Kind of <laughs> yeah. It's kind of equivalent, right? Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, amazing, amazing. And I, I, I think we should highlight that you also work at Aimpoint. So you are yes. the first colleague I've had on the channel, which is a huge privilege. Mm -hmm. um, I'll, I'll save you the, uh, the, the necessity to sort of flatter yourself here by saying everyone at Aimpoint is exceptional uh, at something. Um, mm -hmm. We have so many talented people just in literally every part of the company. And you joined Aimpoint very recently, and you mm -hmm. are like a, a Sigma superhero, if I, if I can term it that. Do they do they have a name for like no. Sigma Jedi's <laughs> they, yet? Like <laughs> they do not yet. I think, all right, all right. Yeah, <laughs> I'm I'm fine with Sigma superhero. That works. S There's Sigma some superhero. I think yeah. it does need some sort of specific like context to. 
the brand mm-hmm. around Sigma. They don't, you know, Sigma didn't go with like, you know, Snowflake with uh, Snow and Databricks with building, right? So yeah, mm-hmm. it needs something, but we can we can maybe think about that over time. And if anyone <laughs> watching has any yes. suggestions, uh, yeah, feel free to, to, to suggest some. So um, yeah, no, you talked about sort of your journey t- through Tableau. And I actually want to mm-hmm. talk a bit about that because for a lot of people who learn Tableau, like it's a very sort of, let's say, I'm going to call it interesting experience. And I I use the term interesting (laughs) because I don't think I've ever met two people who have the same journey um, Mm -hmm. when when discovering Tableau. Um, Many people tend to have a use case. Tableau Mm -hmm. becomes a tool. And Mm -hmm. then once they connect with the tool, it becomes the thing they use for everything, right? And I think, you know, if we sort of fast forward to where this conversation might go, you've kind of completed that journey and found something else that does a lot of the things you like to do better right so before we get to that bit we'll come to that definitely (laughs) what was your experience of learning tableau like and yeah just maybe maybe talk a bit about that yeah um i would say that my experience of learning tableau was sort of a trial by fire or (laughs) you know kind of do what you can um i was working at a uh so I was working at this company and they had Power BI and I was like, I want to learn more about data viz. Power BI is just didn't click with me at the time. Yeah, um, yeah. And so I went online and I I think I just Googled like what are good data visualization tools. Yeah. I did maybe a Udemy or something course on, on Tableau. So it was very, mm-hmm. very simple. I honestly, looking back on it, don't really remember any of it. I think it was just like too much at the time. Um, it's and like, also... Yeah. Yeah, I was trying, I was also teaching myself SQL. So there's just like yeah. so much stuff going on because I, I mm-hmm. realized that I wanted a new job in that space. Yeah. Um, and so then when I was job hunting, I found a job that that had Tableau uh, and it, they ended up using Tableau, Snowflake and Ultrix. And yeah. so it was a really fun mix to learn all of those tools together. Yeah. But at yeah. the same time, it was a the company um, invested in people who are early in their career. They gave them a lot mm-hmm. of opportunities to say, hey, go go learn this, but yeah. you have to go learn it. Um, and yeah. so I just started Googling and trying to go through yeah. the the um, courses that were online. Anything that was yeah. free was yeah. really the thing. It was I didn't have yeah, a budget absolutely. at the time, so I yeah. had to go to go to free things. And then, as I mentioned, um, I started being really active in the local Tableau community. And yeah. I would say that the two main things about that were one, just having someone else to ask questions to. Yeah. I was the only yeah. data person at that job. And so I was like, <laughs> I don't have, I don't have anyone help. to bounce ideas off of yeah. or just any, I remember a lot of uh, times I would, I would do something and I'd be like, yeah. I don't know if this is the best way to do it, but it works. So <laughs> I'm just going to go with it. Yeah. I guess. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. So the going to the user groups really taught me, um, you know, new ideas and, and new ways to solve like the same problems. And right. then I also got plugged in with a good crew um, of people who were doing workout Wednesday. And so we yes. would meet every Wednesday yeah. for like an hour or something. And we would just do as much of the challenge as we could. And I would yeah. say those two things really, um, uh, what's like a, the, I don't want to say escalated, but. Uh, <laughs> accelerated. Uh, yeah. Yes. Accelerated yeah. Yeah. my, yeah. my yeah. understanding and growth. Yeah, I can't I can't emphasize enough, um, you know, reps really matter with something mm-hmm. like Tableau because mm-hmm. um, weirdly, I, I think Tableau is one of those tools where the muscle memory of doing something only stays with you if you do it and you 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 kind of go through the exercise of doing it because, you know, Tableau is funny because it's it's quite a focused tool, but it's also quite mm-hmm. a broad tool at the same time, right? It, 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 it's an yes. analytics <laughs> platform. That's a very focused thing. But the way you can do things, there's so many ways you can do the same thing within the product. And so mm-hmm. this question of like, what's the best way to do something becomes super important. But something like Workout Wednesdays, Makeover Mondays are really good for is really focusing you on why this specific path is going to Mm -hmm. be successful in this specific use case. And once you get that muscle memory, it just becomes like a, you know, like a walk you do every week uh, down the Mm -hmm. park. You you stop paying attention to the signs and you just do the walk. And sometimes you take a detour, but it's all intentional, right? And so, yeah, reps really, really count. And um, Mm -hmm. just going back to something else you said there, and I I sort of want to pull this out you were the only data person in your in your team and i think 
Yeah. I always tell people, like, if you're looking for a data job, those are the best jobs because uh, you, you said it yourself, like you had to do everything. So mm -hmm. you kind of get really good exposure to pretty much everything. <laughs> and um, yes. I'd like to think that then reflects positively in your career because mm -hmm. it exposes you to so much more uh sort of possibility than if you work as part of a bigger data team where everyone has their roles everyone has their silos that they stick within right yep yep there's yeah. a lot of uh you get to just try things because yeah. there's no one necessarily like watching over your shoulder and saying no you can't do that or you know we don't want to give you access to to that or to that data or something so it's a very yeah. um greenfield environment which can be very exciting yeah exactly exactly so before we talk about sigma and what it is how mm -hmm. did you, like you said, you know, Snowflake, uh, Alteryx, Tableau, that's known in some fields as the salt stack, right? So mm -hmm. uh, those, the, the, the trio of tools kind of come up again and again. Um, what led you from that to um, Sigma, if that makes sense? Sort of how did you get yeah. from what is a very typical actually architecture for, you know, let's say analytics from maybe four or five years ago, right? To where you are today. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I would say that I'll, the the journey of getting to Sigma started yeah. with my Excel experience. Um, right. I just that was my bread and butter. That's what I, I yeah. thought of um, when I thought of how to interpret data. I thought of it as in a spreadsheet or as Excel. I remember so in between um, the that job and Aimpoint. Now I did uh, work at another consulting shop, and so I remember a a client that I built them this very beautiful Tableau dashboard and they always just would ask, can you export that to Excel? Can you just show me the numbers? <laughs> All of those things. And I yeah. remember being really frustrated by like, don't you love yeah. my bar charts? Yeah. <laughs> those yeah, exactly. kinds of things. But um, I, as part of, of that experience, one of, and as we, we were talking about like growing my Tableau experience as yeah. well, and just like technical expertise, I, uh, figured out a way to make a pivot table in Tableau because again, that's something that everyone kept asking me for and yeah. having that familiarity of that look, I think um, the look and feel of a pivot table yeah. really helped yeah. with the user adoption in some of my uh, more yeah. Excel heavy clients, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I guess you could say. And so that experience of writing that blog, um, it's, I think it's like 22 steps. Uh, it's a multi-select yeah. parameter. You know, there's lots of complicated advanced things. It was very fun to do and, and pushing my career and my technical understanding. But then when I saw Sigma for the first time, it's built in, like pivot tables are built in yeah. and just yeah. having the spreadsheet interface just clicked for me. And it made mm -hmm. like everything that I looked at uh, made sense to me. And the way that Sigma thinks about data was the way that I thought about data. And that was yeah. the big light bulb. And then the other uh, maybe tiny, tinier light bulb was, as you had touched on earlier, um, I really felt like I had kind of reached the cap of what I was going to reach in the Tableau community. Yeah, fair, I knew yeah. I was never going to be a Tableau Tim or you know, a Zen master, <laughs> those sorts yeah. of things. Like yeah. there's so many um, great voices already. And I had kind of Felt like it wasn't my jam anymore, and I was starting yeah, to yeah. look around for some something else. And so again, when yeah. I saw saw Sigma, it made sense, and it was kind of a right place, right time for me. Yeah, like oh gosh, you touched on so many like salient points there. I think um, many people share your sentiment in terms of like you 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 get so far with Tableau, and then at that point. You feel like you've had your fill and mm -hmm. that's not necessarily means you, you stop using it. It doesn't necessarily mean you lose passion for it, but um, there is still what I would say this itch that there is a better way to do something. And I, I think mm -hmm. that's, that's fair. Like my whole channel exists because I think there is a better way to do something. And I'm just showing people how I think it should be done, uh, mm -hmm. you know, with the features they get. But in every single video, at the end of every single video, I will always talk about, I wish Tableau did this. I wish Tableau did that. I wish Tableau yep. did that. And if you sort of aggregate all of those up and you kind of synthesize it into sort of some salient points, um, there are probably a couple of themes that come out of that. And the thing you said about, you know, Excel, like people, people wanting, I'm going to say this now, like the spreadsheet was probably one of the greatest innovations that like came because even to this day there's just something about that sort of let's say interface i'm going to call it an interface yeah. um 
that is yes. that does it make sense to people there's a table of data right you can choose what you want on your headers and rows you can choose sort of the aggregation and there's just something about that interface that people get they might not know excel they might not be ninjas at excel but everyone mm -hmm. sort of knows ah oh, this cell this number a73 mm -hmm. i want it to you know do this with e55 on tab number three right like you can compute that in a very simple way and i think with tableau sometimes those linkages are more abstract you know how do you explain yes. an lod <laughs> how do you explain a window calculation like if you've seen mm -hmm. my video on the window calculation i'm sat there drawing diagrams and arrows like showing you how like the window is moving and the the average is being done and it's yep. yeah it's very hard to abstract that when we look at mm -hmm. um let's say relationships and i'm telling you how like to do a date scaffold with relationships and there's this complicated formula going on that allows you to do like the number of patients in the hospital like that is a very abstract way of thinking that unless you've got very um i'll say like an extremely creative mind to be able to visualize that in your head mm -hmm. it's actually quite hard for most people to pick up especially if you assume that data literacy generally is average not great if that makes sense yeah. and so you do need something that's quite accessible um so i've i've talked for a lot there um <laughs> essentially backing 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 your point um and I think just before we sort of get into to, to, to Sigma itself, it's a super interesting time right now in analytics because um, I think I think there is very there's a very clear sentiment that the, the field is changing, the game is changing. All the tools seem to be yeah. going through what I would call like a a new era, but I don't mm -hmm. think anyone knows where that era is going to land. So there's so mm -hmm. much opportunity, and I think I'd love to get your perspective on like. On, on your just just any general thoughts around that and a, any sort of trends you're seeing there that you think are worth sort of pulling out and then 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 we'll get straight into sigma i promise you <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah i think um the the thing that i'm most excited for in the future of data and yeah. analytics is the thing that you touched on in the sense that you have to like there's there's some data and some understanding of data that's accessible to everyone because we all look at our bank sheets. We all yeah. like understand how calendars work or we've all like read a table before. But yeah. then there's also those conceptual things where it's, um, you know, my my husband works in IT, but we're very like, so we both do computer things, but they're very yeah. different computer things. And yeah. when he talks about his world, I'm like, yeah, I don't, cool. <laughs> and then when I talk about my world, it's just, he's like, you made a bar yeah. chart, <laughs> like, yeah. you know? Exactly, and, yeah. and so there's, there's that that disconnect between um, the accessible things and then the okay you actually have to have some schooling or training or watch some videos on yeah. on these things in order to understand the concepts and I'm excited for the lowering of the bar of that second yes. one where yes when more people are able to look at data and understand how it works in a uh, more accessible way that offers a lot more creativity in in the data world. And I think that mm -hmm. there's a need for um, new perspectives. Uh, I'm really excited. One of the great things about the Tableau community is that even, even though I mentioned at the beginning, I knew that I was never going to be a Tableau Tim, like there's always new voices coming out Correct. and there's always new people yes. who are, are making a brand. They are um, establishing their voice and saying, hey, this is how I think things should be or challenging, you know, whatever the the common perception is and yeah. so the to kind of pull it back in i think the the thing that i'm most excited for about the data industry is that it's a bunch of curious innovative people and we're going to yes. keep being curious we're going to keep yes. trying to innovate on making things either better faster less expensive more accessible easier to understand all of those yeah. great things and I think it's it's a really exciting precipice to be on. Yes. But then yes. there's also I will also caveat that statement with a lot of that I think is going to be um, for better or worse fed by AI, and I am, am curious to see where that goes. So uh, I I could not agree more. <laughs> In my mind, I feel like this change was happening before AI. Mm -hmm. I feel like this change had just started. Um, mm -hmm like two years ago and AI sort of just turned up and hijacked that a little bit. Like it's, 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 and I don't think it's even just AI, AI itself. I think companies have decided to market what they previously weren't marketing as AI, as AI. 
because AI mm. is the buzzword. AI is yes. the yeah. thing that catches on <laughs> and flies. And it's like, you know, Tabo used to do machine learning. Now that's called AI. Um, yep. And I know it's machine learning. It's not AI. Yes. It's not artificial <laughs> intelligence. But AI yeah. as a term has just swallowed up all these things. Like autocomplete is apparently AI now. You know what I mean? Yep. Like, so, yes. <laughs> it's you... kind of ridiculous. <laughs> Have you seen that meme of Scooby Doo and there's like a bad guy who's tied up and and like there's a mask and it says AI and then you take it off and it's just a bunch of if statements. On yes, either. exactly. Like, yeah. That's... <laughs> I'll try and find it and put it up on yeah. the video when I edit. It's it's absolutely the case. It's absolutely the case. And yeah, I, I you know I actually said exactly the thing you said about lowering the bar when I got my golden hoodie at Salesforce. I said one of the great things that you know is, is about to happen is that. We're about to uh, sort of lower the, what did I say? Low, what did I say? I said, lower the ceiling. Oh, I can't remember exactly what I said, but it sounded good because it was in a keynote. And, uh, <laughs> and yes. I said exactly what you said. Things are going to get easier so more people can do things. But I also said that things are going to get um, really complex. Things are also going to get easier for the people who know how to do those complex things. Mm -hmm. So that gap mm -hmm. is going to get smaller. And I think lots of, lots of great things are going to happen. So... Mm -hmm. Right, enough about Tableau and all the other things. Um, <laughs> yeah. Let's start with, like, let's start, what is Sigma? I know this is like a, such a broad question, and I know if I was to really ask you this and give you half an hour, you could easily fill half an hour. <laughs> but if we sort yeah. of just scale it down, and maybe you can use the context of Tableau as, as, as like mm -hmm. a reference point. Yeah, what, how would you describe Sigma to the Tableau community? Maybe let's start there. Yeah, yeah. So when I'm talking uh, in particular to the Tableau community, I often describe Sigma as Tableau Desktop plus Tableau Prep, where you've got a combination of data manipulation. So you can do joins, unions, yeah. you know, all of those uh, fun things. You can do it outside of a workbook, in a workbook, which is very fun to, to do. And it, I think it expands a lot of functionality. But then yeah. you also have the workbooks and the data visualization side of things. And so Sigma really uh, is kind of like having Excel plus the visual side of Tableau plus Tableau yeah. prep. Um, I think that's the the simplest way that I would describe it. And that is absolutely spot on. It's a, it's a really good, um, it's a really good way of contextualizing what's possible. One of the biggest critiques, I know I said we'd stop talking about Tableau, but just very briefly, <laughs> one of the biggest critiques I have of Tableau is that why on earth is Tableau desktop and Tableau prep? separate so yeah. separate to the fact that yep. actually you have to have like two chrome tabs open to get like serious work done between the two mm -hmm. if you're doing web 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 authoring or if you're not doing web authoring you do the desktop experience you have two pieces of software one of which chugs on ram tablet prep and the other mm -hmm. <laughs> of which is just not designed for the web at all so like they, they sit in such disparate parts of the ecosystem yet in genuine genuine terms they should just be intrinsically one experience i know that's happening in the future but yeah tablet <laughs> please yes. sort it out yes back to back to sigma sigma's doing it right amazing yeah. um yeah if we dig a bit deeper into that what would you then say you know with tableau desktop the the thing people pull out is the drag and drop right mm -hmm. with sigma i think you alluded to, to earlier it is is it that spreadsheet sort of interface am i simplifying it too much by saying that uh i don't think that you're simplifying it it is spreadsheet based or like yep. i would say that the majority of it is spreadsheet but there is that drag and drop um typically yep. with the visualizations those interfaces so it's kind of it's like a little bit of both um a while back i heard an interview from one of the co-founders where he was talking about like how did you come up with this idea? And he yeah. described it as what if you could write SQL from Excel? And right. so that's kind of the, the idea behind it is putting a spreadsheet interface on top of SQL so yeah. that you can make it more accessible and understandable to, to business folks or yeah. you know, folks that don't yeah. have that technical or that data visualization background. Yeah. And I think that's actually super powerful because SQL I, that is probably one of the greatest innovations of the last, like, I don't know how long that gets no recognition whatsoever because it, it drives pretty much every single piece of technology in one way or another. Mm -hmm. And um, being able to give everyday people an interface to that does a couple of things. Firstly, it brings a lot of really powerful technology to those people. Mm -hmm. but secondly, it also brings the power of doing things that way uh, to a lot more people. So when I talk about SQL, I'm thinking of databases. I'm thinking of um, very specific, 
I'm going to say computations and operations that, you know, advanced data analysts do with their data. But if you try and do those things in Excel, you might be doing it in a fairly crude way, you know, in a fairly, mm -hmm. let's say, simplistic way. But if you're doing them in something like SQL, they're much more powerful, they're more optimized, they're operating at scale. And I know that Sigma is really sort of fond of being able to connect to what I would call modern databases, really genuinely designed yep. for scale, right? So if we sort of push into that a little bit, like mm -hmm. how have you how have you found that a sort of experience of Sigma working alongside these modern databases, but still keeping that, that Excel interface, you know, nice and accessible to people? Yeah, I think you you touched on one of the main points about it it being uh, specifically designed for cloud or modern yeah. architecture. It just it allows for so much more data to be used in, yeah. in a lot of um, in your in your builds, and I think that that um, again is what people are asking for for like from the IT team from the data team. Yeah. They're like, I want more, I want more detail, I want more information, I want more granularity. But then I also want to be able to do it myself. And so there's yes. those two um, two combinations that really come together to create something really powerful. One of the the things that Sigma always talks about is the ability to prototype really quickly. Yes. I think as we we talked about at the beginning, um, you kind of need some intro lessons to to Tableau in order to oh, definitely. build yeah. something. Um, yeah. I would say in in any platform, anytime you make any changes to to learn something new or to bring on something new, you have to learn something new like where is yeah. this menu option where do i click to do these things but in general i would say the learning curve of, of sigma is significantly lower than mm -hmm. than tableau as well as um one of the other things that i think is really great about it is i can build something or you can build something and then we can give it to someone else and they can go poke around and play with it a lot uh e easier more easily um, yeah, yeah, in yeah. in that ui and they also um can make mistakes and it's not costly. There isn't a, you know, hey, Tim, can you spend three hours writing this mm -hmm. new LOD to add this new level of granularity so that I can think, and then maybe that's not actually the question I need answered. Yeah. Um, someone can just go and uh, kind of right click and drill down, choose what they want to drill down into. They can, you know, pivot or unpivot different things and explore yeah. it. And it's accessible and cheap <laughs> and, yeah, and yeah. cheap in a good way, like cheap and inexpensive. Yeah. There's yeah. not a, it doesn't take a lot of time. So there's not Correct. a lot of huge investment. And then you can say, okay, you know, Hey, I really like this analysis. This is exactly what I'm looking for. Yeah. Can you go productionalize it? Can you make it optimal? Um, can you expand it? All of those sorts of things. So hmm. uh, it provides that lower bar of entry to create something that's really meaningful and still impactful. Yeah, yeah. And I think there is also something, you know, I'll say it again. Um, when you instantiate something in Sigma, uh, I, so I don't know why I'm using complex words. When you build something in Sigma, what you see is what you get in a very yes. sort of direct way. Like the, yes. the table you're looking at is the, is the, is going to be the outcome. The chart you're looking at is mm -hmm. going to be the thing you see. Often in Tableau, that's sometimes not the case for yes. lots of very good <laughs> reasons. But it's it's hard to decipher what that is. And if I sort of be brutal on Tableau a little bit, um, one of the things that struck me with with my Sigma experience when I was trying it, I went through the trial experience. You know, I got a trial account, mm -hmm. whatever, and I set it up. I was like, okay, let's just do things like I'm a completely newbie. And it took me 15 minutes to go from uh, signing up to the trial to building an out, uh, output. And yes, it was a guided step by step guide. But it took me 15 minutes to do that. Now, the same experience with Tableau, if you try and sort of just follow that path, there are so many points where it's easy for someone to get lost, exactly as you said. So so easy for them to sort of even get distracted, even the visual analysis bit. Like, I know that is actually a good thing for data best practice, but I realize in some respects, it's also a massive distraction <laughs> because <laughs> once you get to the vision element, now suddenly you start to worry about design. You start to worry about all these other mm -hmm. things. You start to worry about formatting. You start to worry about finesse. And you start to worry about layouts. And you're on my channel looking at layout containers. Like, what has layout containers got to do with analytics? Nothing mm -hmm. whatsoever, right? So, you know, it's a really eye-opening experience. When I, when I step back and look at it and so actually, there are people every day learning analytics for the first time. Mm -hmm. Yes, people like me, we know Tableau. So for us, getting from... You know that idea to a chart we don't have the what i would call burden of having to go back and learn all this stuff 
But if you're learning Tableau as a new analyst today, and you, you sort of draw a list of the things I think you have to get right to get, you know, good with Tableau. It takes me three hours to do that in the crash course, YouTube channel, video mm -hmm. channel that I have. Right. And I think it took Sigma 15 minutes to essentially reach the same equivalent point. Now, yes, there's different levels of complexity. Yes, there's different sort of depth you can go to, but I genuinely feel like I knew what Sigma did in those 15 minutes. But I do think a lot of people still have to walk through at least an hour long video to get the gist of Tableau. And mm -hmm. that's before you've even downloaded it. So yes. um, I'll, I'll leave, <laughs> I'll leave that there. I'll say that yeah. on your behalf because I know, I know everyone will, will be like, oh, Katrina, you know, she, she, she wrote the book on Sigma. Of course she's going to yes. dunk on Tableau. No, I'm dunking yeah. on Tableau here. So, <laughs> so um, yeah, sorry. I'll let you come in on that. Sorry. Uh, that's okay. I mean, there are plenty of things that I uh, am still not a fan of in Sigma or that I miss about Tableau. Of course, and I think, of course. You know, it's it's a uh, any any platform you use is going to have a direction, and yeah. sometimes that doesn't need exactly what you need, and yeah. that's okay. Yeah. And it's a yeah. uh, you know, I think that really the the big thing that um, again drew me to Sigma was the fact that I felt like. Tableau was mostly for Tableau builders or like people yes. like Tableau is designed for people who use Tableau and yeah. then Sigma is designed for everyone else <laughs> in, yeah. in that way. Like you can definitely build very complex and, and complex and very beautiful analysis, Yeah. but the primary user or the, the things, and I think you, you touched on it as well of the, what you see is what you get. Like yeah. that's very much so Sigma's approach. Like why yeah. complicate it if you don't have to, why do a um, five layer mapping layer to get a KPI when you could just have a KPI element built in that automatically yeah. does calculations for you? So yeah. that, that simple approach of what you see is what you get in a good way um, is, yes. was one of my favorite parts about Sigma. What you see is what you get is very, is, it was the, the original philosophy behind Tableau as well. So, you know, it, it just shows you how, I think starting a fresh can give you a, a much mm -hmm. more focused take on principles that mm -hmm. I think everyone already agrees with. Um, and yeah, I think, oh God, um, it, in the, in the last two years, Tableau realized exactly what you just said there, which is everyone else. I think, um, they've even used that terminology in conferences showing a chasm between what they call creators today and yep. everyone else. Um, and yep. they have this new initiative called the fourth wave. It's essentially a complete rebuild of Tableau. I think I could call it that. And they're going to announce it at Dreamforce. But it, it goes back to this, I think, fear, this concern that uh, they don't make a product that's geared to everyone in the enterprise mm -hmm. being mm -hmm. enabled to build their own answers and solutions. Yes, they recognize dashboards and, you know, views were a necessity, a necessary step. And yes, they realize they are still going to be curated experiences done by advanced analysts. But fundamentally, with things like Tableau Pulse, it's very, very clear that they realize now they need to do a lot more for what is actually their larger customer base, everyone else. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, absolutely. Yes. Bang on. Yeah. 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 And, and all, um, a lot of people at Sigma always use the phrase of, of Sigma standing on giants. You know, Sigma is not <laughs> created in a, it's not like they, they woke up one day and thought of this idea to like yeah. do data visualization spreadsheets. Like they used spreadsheets before they used other yeah. BI tools. Yeah. And there's a lot of, um, I think you, you uh, again, maybe touched on it. If I remember correctly, that like there's innovation and creativity in the data world. And when yeah. you see a, an approach that works relatively well, like again, yeah. Tableau is a wonderful tool. It will always hold a special place in my heart. It is a great platform for the right use case. Sigma is a great platform for the right use case. Those use cases don't have to be the same. And that's really yeah. um, the point of like, you can do, you can use both. You can use one or the other. Um, it's really about fitting like that, um, that path forward that you need with you, your data, your users, their yeah. data literacy, your data size. There's so many things that go into it. Yeah, exactly. 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 So um Gosh, so many, so many, you know, deep <laughs> conversations. I know Tableau product managers are going to watch this video with um, eagle eyes. I, 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 I have this <laughs> sort of statistic that I think 20%, 30% of my audience are just 
Salesforce uh, product yeah. managers <laughs> rewatching se segments of the video. So if that's you, hit the like button or leave me some sort of hint <laughs> to let me know that that's you. Um, yes. I think it. I think it might be useful next if we um, if we could see a little bit of Sigma, if that makes sense, yeah. and if we could sort of see it in action, so um, people can sort of conceptualize. You know, what is what is this thing we're talking about? Why is it so radically different? What is this spreadsheet mentality? Um, and I, I I don't want to do like a build demo. Be, you know, obviously build something, yes. But what I mean to to the audience here is don't treat this as uh, like a like a um like a speed and uh, tableau you have these like you know fond of re these challenges like a, a speed build or iron viz or you know um the, like design contest this this uh, this is not that this is more of like a i'm an analyst i need to understand what sigma is um mm -hmm. what is the fundamental essence of this product if that makes sense right yeah yeah um let me Sure. So this is Sigma. As you can see, one of the main things that's really nice about it is that it's browser based. Uh, you can yeah. access it anywhere. This is the home page. You can see some things I've been looking at recently. And then this left side navigation is just kind of like how you find things. Um, yeah. This create new is, as we talked about, kind of the these two things are modeling. This is like the Tableau prep side of things. But I'm going to hop into a workbook, which is the same as a Tableau workbook. I'm going to nice. connect to a table. Um, this is just pulling in my data source for the first time. It's saying, what do right. you want to look at? What data are you trying yeah. to use? I'm going to use this Plugs Electronic Hands-On Lab. It is the equivalent uh, or Sigma equivalent to Superstore data. Mm -hmm. And here you see the first example of the spreadsheet-like interface. Uh, it yeah. is a table <laughs> and, yeah. and, and that's it. Um, we've got the columns on this side. And then I'm going to show, um, I will, I'll do, we'll do like a, this is, is retail data. Um, if anyone's unfamiliar with Superstore data, it is, right. um, this is like a, a electronic company. So this is a, an order by, uh, the granularity is an order number at the SKU level. So pretty large. It's also about 4.5 million rows, but mm -hmm. we'll just show how to add a calculation. I can come here to add a new column or over on this side. And then I'll, all I'm doing is um, I can either click on something or I can type in, um, we'll do price. And then I select it that way. I click enter and I'm going to format this as currency. And this is my sales column. So now I have my row level calculation of my sales. And if I want to do something that is more uh, higher, like a higher level of granularity than this, let's say we yeah. want to look at our, our sales by region. I'll pull region up in here. I can also um, you know, click on here and do uh, group columns. And then I'll pop over to this side and we can see that Sigma has kind of changed the interface of this yeah. table. This is going to be a lot more similar to a pivot table where I can expand and collapse things. Yeah. All yeah. this is doing is creating um, group buys or for each calculations on the back end. So then I can take that sales column that we did earlier, uh, yeah. pull that up into calculations, or again, I can add a column up here and do some of sales. Right. And now I have my, sales for each region and nice that's that's about it um that's the the first level of kind of creating a a row level as well as a grouped or an lod uh in in tableau terms uh calculation in sigma yeah i mean uh, just i'll call out two things it's a in this sort of very brief demo you've done it's immediately in my head solved something that i think is really tough for people to le uh, learn about tableau which is when you create an aggregation in Tableau, you out of the gate, you have to tell people, no, write sum of sales. And you're like, mm -hmm. but why sum? Like it's, I just want to multiply quantity by mm -hmm. price. Why do I need to do so? Like, why? Like, and it's like, because it's a row level versus an aggregation, but because you can't yep. see that, it's yes. really hard to understand that. Well, here, mm -hmm. It didn't have to explain that because it was clear when you're in the row level, you're doing a row level calculation. And it's clear when you aggregated it up that you needed to aggregate it up. So mm -hmm. in a weird way, the table solves the problem for you and actually makes it much, much easier to understand. So yeah, no, it's really, yeah. really obvious. What you see is what you get. Yeah. Yes. 
Yeah. And I think it, it also adds a lot of, of flexibility in like, let me try something um, as we were talking about earlier, let me try it. And if it's what I want, great. If it's not, yeah. that's okay too. So mm -hmm. if I want to, uh, for example, see my region sales by quarter, I can pull my date column up here. I can nice. uh, truncate this to quarter. So again, uh, one other thing I want to call out that um, Sigma has a lot of things that are built in. So you can use menu options to do things or you can type things in. So it's whatever you're comfortable with, um, mm -hmm. whatever is faster for you. And then uh, we can pull that same sales calculation up into that quarter calculation um, nice. so that we can see our sales by quarter and, and by region. So nice. this, nice. for example is going to give me, um, so we've created two different levels of detail, two different levels yeah. of aggregation. We've got our region and our quarter. So this is going to be um, the what was sold in this date in this region. But let's yeah. say I want to look at uh, sales by quarter by region. I can quickly just flip these two things around nice. and then expand this Flips out. Around. And now I oh, get, wow. I yeah, get this. Yeah set. So yeah. again, a lot of flexibility, a lot of like, let me try, try it out, see if it doesn't work. You can also have like multiple statements in here. Um, mm -hmm. If you want to do that, I would say not a best practice to, to leave a group <laughs> by by itself, but that's okay. <laughs> we'll, yeah. We can undo. Yeah. Um, and then again, we can always like use these calculations as if they were row level calculations as well. Mm -hmm. So someone um, always ends up asking, you know, how do I do a like percent of total so I can do yes. part divided by a whole. And now this is right my there. percentage yes. for yes. this. And then for all of my uh, Tableau <laughs> demos that I give or folks for, um, who are familiar with Tableau, I always talk about like a fixed calculation or like a oh, high yes. level um, LOD because everyone always asks about that. So one thing you'll note is um, there is no like, I can't pull something to like this top level grouping to do a, right. a table level group by. So mm -hmm. they have this um, option down here for a table summary. So then I can oh, do the same okay. um, yeah, yeah. sales. And then this would be my total sales for my, my table. And again, Very I can cool. use that calculation um, in there too. So yeah, however you want to do it, there is like, as long as you can write a calculation for it in Sigma um, yeah, or yeah. in Excel, like you would, you'd be able to do it in Sigma. And you, you're kind of referencing things. What I, one, one bit I like there is your, you were just grinding the calculation, clicking on the thing you want to reference, and then that becomes a calculation. And again, that keeps it contextual, uh, like on the screen, um, mm -hmm. which is good because there's no sort of nasty calculation window to open to then go and find some sort yes. of nested, like, ca yep. you know, as you do in yep. Tableau, if you're doing fixed or LADs. And um, when you're in the formula, does it highlight the things that made it? Like, is that, um, yes. I can't yep. recall. So, yeah, there you go. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. Which it is really helpful. So for this one, for example, you can see exactly. the two exactly. colors, the yes. two fields yeah. that, that you're yeah. using. Um, I, I think that troubleshooting in Sigma is a lot easier as you Correct. called out, like not needing Correct. to do this other Correct. complex window or yeah. um, I can see the numbers and I can see how it's calculating versus kind of having to conceptualize how my data is formatted in the background, as well as how does Tableau think about your data um, yeah. and, and understand how Tableau uses LODs and, and all those sorts of things. Very the different. biggest difference uh, between Sigma and Tableau, in my opinion, is that uh, Tableau generally starts at the top with like a top level aggregation and you use uh -huh. LODs to work your way down. Sigma starts at the bottom at a row level and you use these yeah. group by statements to build your build your way up. So yeah. in my opinion, it's a lot more flexible because I'm able to designate each puzzle piece along the way. Yeah. But it is... Uh, there's plenty of, of scenarios where like sometimes like an LOD would, would be easier. Sometimes I, I still think to revert to my Tableau logic. Um, yeah. So it's it's a flip. Uh, you just kind of got to get get used to thinking about how Sigma thinks about your data versus Tableau. Yeah, and it's an interesting one because as you say, I'm like, yeah, we you know when you're building in Tableau, you do tend to build from the top down. So you have to start with some of sales. Mm -hmm. Then you bring in your dimensions, then you bring in your thing, then you bring in your present. So as you say, top down, um, with this, 
I kind of call that drill down um, authoring, if that makes sense. This is like drill mm -hmm. up authoring. The thing about yes. drill up authoring is it's less likely to make a mistake. You're less likely to make a mistake because, well, you start at the lowest level. And if immediately something isn't right, I think mm -hmm. it's more apparent. Um, it's a bit like um, yeah, building a Lego model. Like It's more apparent if you're working with the wrong pieces. But if you start with the big piece at the top yeah. and you start to take things apart, yep. it's actually easy to lose track of what what's supposed to be where because you didn't have any context of the detail that went into it so uh, mm -hmm. really interesting i never thought of it that way but it's a really good way of actually kind of drilling into it um but i will i will say this now like everyone who uses tableau um they they hate tables right so um is <laughs> yes. there a way to bring visuals into this i, I say yes. it now before someone goes ah but this is all tables you know <laughs> yes <laughs> Yeah, uh, you could definitely bring in visualizations. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to come up here to this top menu and create what's called a child element. Um, I'm going to yeah. choose visualization. Basically, child element just means that it's sourced from that element, which yeah. if we go down to the lineage, we can see where things are, are built from or connected to. This is, again, one of my favorite parts about Sigma. It's that, that Tableau prep or that Alteryx workflow visual where I can see yeah. See my joins, my unions, my new table sources, my groupings, all those things in here. And it really helps with troubleshooting yeah. as well as just like understanding how a workbook is put together. Correct. Like I've yeah. inherited yeah. some workbooks and had to go in and make changes. And it's really hard to do in Tableau if the person yeah. didn't write good documentation. Um, yeah. Sigma, you could obviously hide things. And, and if good documentation is valuable everywhere, but I think having a visual really helps with that. But yeah. Um, yeah. So here is the uh, other kind of interface. We, we've looked at the table one for groupings. Then we've got our, our bar chart here. As we talked about before, we can do um, that drag and drop. So let's say we want to look at that um, sales by quarter. We can pull that up again. I can just type in uh, something as well. Mm -hmm. And then I get my my sum of sales. Nice. Nice. And it's um. Like, uh, I like the way it's got the x-axis and y-axis sort of, like, um, denoted. And I don't know if this is me um, not understanding something in Sigma. This is where you kind of get to find out how far I am in my journey, which is not very far. <laughs> um, yeah. What I think I was trying to do is I was trying to rotate this this chart 90 degrees. You know how in, like, mm -hmm. Tableau that is, like, a, like a, a, yep. a thing? And... You've used yeah. that icon, but what I was trying to do is I was trying to come at it the tableau way, which is I was trying to drag quarter of day into the Y axis and oh, some cells into yeah. the X axis. And that didn't work. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So, and, and I could, sense. and I, I couldn't understand why. And I think it's because in tableau, it does, it doesn't sort of, um, what's the word? It doesn't, um, it doesn't, it doesn't dictate the context, but. I think mm -hmm. Sigma does have like a preference of putting dimensions in the X axis yes. and uh, metrics in the Y axis. And therefore yes. that flip is actually a, it's an aesthetic flip rather than like a semantic yep. flip of the X and the Y axis, right? Yeah. So what, it sounds like what you did was, was to do this yes, um, and, and, then, like, what is this? and then yeah. flip it this <laughs> yeah. way. Yes. Which is <laughs> hard, probably not what you were going for. <laughs> no, it but, wasn't what I was going for. Yeah. yeah I mean, absolutely. You, yeah. You were spot on. Um, Sigma does want you to put your dimensions here yeah, first yeah. and then do yeah. this. If this was something where, you know, Hey, I was trying this or I didn't, um, you know, build it correctly right away. Like we can yeah. flip this and then yeah. you just, you know, click and drag them in there yeah. again. And um, around, it's really, yeah. really simple. You can see that Sigma is defaulting anything that is in the the X access to it or in this an room, aggregation. Um, yeah. to yeah. an aggregation. Yeah. Which, if you want to remove an aggregation, you can always just delete or like remove the that formula. text yeah. around yeah. it, yeah. Um, yeah. and then it'll and it'll give you just that become like, normal. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Yeah, but it. It highlighted to me, I'm coming at this process wrong. Like when you're learning something new, <laughs> yeah. like uh, yep. the, the analogy I've been using the last month is about cars. I use BMWs and Porsches, both mm -hmm. fantastic cars. I don't think anyone would argue with that, but you don't drive a BMW and a Porsche in the same way because they're very mm -hmm. different cars. A Porsche is, a, you know, the engine is literally put in a very specific place to make the driving experience better. In a BMW, they're typically a rear wheel drive, very different type of car, typically mm -hmm. a saloon, 
a completely different experience. If you're going to drive them fast, you don't drive them the same way. You drive them entirely differently. And I think to, to everyone who's learning a new tool, try not to come with your, what I would say, preconceptions or mm -hmm. not necessarily bias because biases has like a negative connotation, but your preconceptions and assumptions from the old tool into the new one. Just try things out, as you've said, and see what happens and try and learn what the, the norms are in the new tool. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And, and I'll um, call out that when I was first learning Sigma, I did exactly what you said not to do, where I came with my, <laughs> my tableau of mind. And I was like, how do I do an LOD? Like, how do I do yeah. the, these things? Where are my mapping layers? Like all, all this stuff. Yeah. So yeah. Um, it definitely is, is a different approach. And, but I think it is a simple um, or once you kind of understand how Sigma works or same way as once you understand how Tableau works, it, it makes sense and you can kind of yeah. keep going from there. But I think that that trial and error probably would have been a lot softer and easier on me if I had come with with fewer expectations yeah. um, or fewer uh, conception or ideas about it being similar to Tableau. Another yeah, thing exactly. I will say, though, um, with that is I think when when other people are asking me about how to learn Sigma, whether they're coming from Tableau, Power BI, ThoughtSpot, Click, and really anything, I think the idea of starting with something you're familiar with is really powerful so that you yeah. don't, you can kind of remove, uh, again, one of the first things I did when I uh, was learning Sigma was to upload the Superstore data into yeah. <laughs> Sigma because I was like, <laughs> I know this data, I'll be able to like yeah. understand it, you know, yeah. and kind of yeah. remove that, that barrier of like, oh, yeah, I have true. to... I have to learn the product types or learn this granularity or, or like something like yeah, that. You can just kind of like true. make it easier for yourself. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But I will also say trial and error um, is it, just like poking around, playing with it um, is, is a great way to learn. Yeah. And I, I just tried to break it. <laughs> Those, I tried to yeah. recreate Tableau and break Sigma were the, the ways I taught myself Sigma. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Um, yeah, no. And I, I will say this now, which is, I do think the data analysts of the future, I do think the, you know, consultant of the future won't be using, it won't be like what I would call a mono, um, I had a, I came up with a term for it, like a mono, um, mono practitioner is what I called it. Like mm -hmm. when, 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 when I was learning Tableau, like if I got good enough at Tableau, I didn't need to worry about Power BI. I didn't mm -hmm. need to pick up anything else because there was enough appetite and demand for my skill set to just be mm -hmm. super hyper focused on Tableau. I don't think we live in that world anymore. I think the uh, practitioner yeah. of the future is a multi uh, tool practitioner. Mm -hmm. And I will say that, you know, Tableau and Power BI are often sort of hand in hand and anyone who's becoming a data analyst today should fundamentally learn both of those out of the gate if you want to go out in the world. But I think something like Sigma and there'll be other tools as well. I mm -hmm. think it's important to have what I would call like a, a grounding knowledge in them. So if you have to use them and you're going for a job interview, if you're going for something mm -hmm. else, you have some good context around them, right? Because I, I also think with all of these tools, the barriers have come down. They are all fairly accessible. You can get a trial with all of them and, and understand them. And if you give yourself, like, I always say, if you can't learn it in a weekend, it's not worth learning, right? Like, if, if you can't, if you <laughs> yeah. can't open it up and try it out over a weekend, and you know, big hint there, you need you need to be the one investing that time, not asking your company to give you that time, right? If you can't learn it every weekend, then it's probably not worth your time. And there's other tools better that could do that job just as well that are better mm -hmm. to invest in your time. So um, mm -hmm. I know people watch my videos, uh, like watch whole parts of my content. If you've watched sort of, you know, more than 10 of my videos, I kind of, I'm kind of like, oh, Tableau's failing you there because it shouldn't be that hard to learn all these things. But at the same time, yeah, yeah I think this is a really good tool to, to get familiar with. Um, mm -hmm. Where I was going with my next question is what does mm -hmm. like a finished, dashboard equivalent look like right like what is the we've, we've sort of done the views and sheets as it were of of, of mm -hmm. tableau what is that what does like a dashboard look like um i don't know if you've got an example that um yeah or if sigma have an example that you can kind of walk people through yeah i can definitely show a final dashboard um i'm gonna go to one that i created uh just for fun 
about the yeah. TV show alone. I nice. really love love this show. It's if um, anyone's unfamiliar with it, it's like a wilderness wow. survival show where each yeah. contestant gets to bring ten kind of predetermined items, and then they just survive for as long as they can. And yeah. as the as the title uh, kind of hints at, they are alone. I've seen this. Um, yeah. It is. It's a crazy show. I love watching it uh, with all of my blankets and my popcorn because I'm like, a line. If I would be a terrible <laughs> contestant. I hate being cold. I hate being hungry. So right. it's not for me. Not for me. I will watch. But, is it on Netflix? Is it? Is it like uh, uh, which which I channel? Think, yeah, I think some of the older seasons are on on Netflix um, right. or maybe Hulu. One of those. It is a History Channel original, so yes, wherever yes. you you get that. Um, okay. But yes. yeah, so this is also an example of something that like you can you can apply when when you were talking a little bit earlier about um, how you should know multiple tools. I think the the other thing I want to kind of add to that context though is you should know multiple tools and data visualization best practices or like Correct. fundamental data concepts. Like if you know those plugging, you know, again, as we talked about, like how does Tableau do this thing? How does Sigma do this thing? They're the same thing on the back end. So if you Correct. know what those things are, if you know, yeah. hey, I, I need to do a, a part of a whole analysis, I need to do yeah. a time series analysis, like you'll be good. <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, a yeah. Amen to that. Like I cannot tell you how many times I... I get a little bit frustrated because people will say, I know all these skills with Tableau and now everyone's moving to Power BI and I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. Like these are not Tableau skills. These are yeah. like data, <laughs> data skills. skills and yes. just, just yep. cut the Tableau out of that. Like go mm -hmm. back to your CV, rewrite it all minus mm -hmm. Tableau <laughs> and you'll be fine. Yes. And it's exactly <laughs> the same thing. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Yeah. I cut you short. Yeah. No, that that's okay. Um, I did. I wanted. So I wanted to make this uh, workbook one to to answer a question that I had about the show itself, and then two to kind of show that hey, yes, you like you can make more than just uh, business dashboards with within Sigma. So mm -hmm. this is an example of how like you know you've got a story to it. So yeah. one of the the questions that I really wanted to answer um, was as I had watched the show. There's I think. 12 or 13 seasons now right. um the first season so we can look at the first season has an average lasted days of 20 21 days and a max mm -hmm. of 56 days and then as we continue on this most recent season um this Nine is seasons. this wow. is so there, there are no spoilers if anyone is watching the new season that's <laughs> out right now don't worry only on season nine but we can see that like the the average has gone up as well as the max day has gone gone up pretty significantly yeah. and so one of the things that i noticed was that the contestants became more and more professional oriented like they became um outdoor like folks who had careers or activities that were very outdoors focused or there um there ended up being a lot of folks who came from military backgrounds and so i was like is this due to the the like increase in professionalism or like professional backgrounds or is there something else that's kind of letting lending these folks to to last longer um yeah. so that was the question that i, I wanted to to answer um okay. here but we can take a look at um some of the some of the visuals uh so some of the things i'll call out with sigma you know you've got obviously the opportunity to do text um lots mm -hmm. of filters um we talked to, we didn't we didn't touch on that but these are all like really easy to build they're all yeah. uh like already multi select in there that's yeah. one of the things i really like about it yeah 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 <laughs> um but we can start to create some some really pretty visuals again i think taking some really fundamental data visualization concepts of like does yeah. this color match with this color? Is there a theme? Um, mm -hmm. How can I make something like look like pop on a different color background? It doesn't all yeah. have to be white or gray backgrounds with blue <laughs> blue bar charts or, or text or yeah, those yeah. sorts of things. Yeah, yeah. Um, got some oh, wow. um, some more advanced things with a box plot. So again, we can we can see how like the bar itself is kind of trending in this general direction to lasting longer. Um, mm -hmm. And then season seven was the one where uh, so someone lasted a hundred days, which was Wowzers. insane. I don't like, again, crazy, That's not crazy stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I, I guess they don't know 
they no one has any context of how long they're lasting because the way it's probably yes. produced means you just keep going until you yes, can't do it anymore. You, so like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, you don't know, like you could, there could be 12 people left or two people left. You have no idea and, yeah. and you just got to keep going. Um, this season was, so part of why this season was an outlier was because they, they set a 100 day minimum. They're like, Oh, we're going to up the prize money, but you have to make it a hundred days because up to that point, the highest had been 87. So I'm sure they were like, right. maybe we can not spend our prize money. I don't, I don't know if that was the yeah, motivation behind yeah. it, but, um, so I just, I thought that that was an interesting. And then looking at the next two seasons are nowhere near a hundred days. Yeah. So having that, um, that mental, I can count down the days to a hundred versus I don't know how long I have to last that uncertainty I think is just so uh, scary and yeah trying and taxing um for the for yeah. human mind which is interesting but um interesting. yes so here's an example of a pivot table um we we didn't really touch on those uh, oh, or we yeah. touched on on how I like the them. idea <laughs> yeah exactly yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you can get to, you know a good sense of things um that way so whoops the other thing that I mentioned, um, so each uh, contestant can have 10 items. It's from yeah. the predetermined list. And so yeah. one of the other reasons why I wanted to to make this uh, visualization was because I had a, a very, uh, op- someone who had a very strong opinion that the salt lick was the item to bring and that everyone should be bringing that. And I was like, I don't think that a salt lick, <laughs> you know, to like attract tray uh, yeah. excuse me, attract prey um was the idea i guess and i was like i don't really think there's data to support that so i was kind of showing that I'm trying um, to ding that yeah <laughs> <laughs> yes it's not a thing um yeah. but you can see for example that like everyone brings a pot everyone brings fishing, fishing almost gear. everyone brings fishing like gear stereotypical but, survival gear yes yeah, yeah. yes <laughs> and then you kind of you start to to see a how pan. um it's yeah. so far down. Did no one think they'd yes. be cooking, you know? So they, you start getting into, well, you can use a pot, pot as a frying pan. And I guess. you can. Okay, fine. Um, another one, for example, Slingshot. like gill net. That's something yeah. where you can make a gill net from paracord or from other, other um, trapping, yeah. not trapping wire, but like fishing wire, stuff like that. So you, you start to see some trends, um, okay. which I think is also. Um, I'm trying to remember if there was one that I had in there. Uh, I also wonder if, like, some of the contestants from like season four onwards, having had context of previous seasons, yes. behave yes. and perform differently. Mm-hmm. And then on top of that, you have producers who pick contestants yes. with with ratings in mind, right? So you, mm-hmm. you pick <laughs> you pick what are maybe deliberately vulnerable people to make for better tv while simultaneously those people thinking i'm going to use all the skills and the you know not yes. like so many dynamics to sort of really drill yeah, into consider. It. So, mm-hmm. yeah 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 <laughs> and i i think you're uh like you're spot on there's uh with that that comment about like looking at other or previous seasons um they in in the season or in the shows you know they're just talking to the to the camera and they talk about anything and everything and the later seasons all talk about previous seasons and the previous like stars of the shows and <laughs> and their strategies and what they did and it's like oh this person did like created this specific kind of of shelter yeah. or something yeah. and i'm going to recreate that and like tried and tested all of these <laughs> yeah so they they definitely are I think another example is like tarp, for example, we can see that there was a lot of people in season four that brought it, but yeah. not as much like the farther. The subsequent, uh, the, yeah. Yeah. Like some do, but you know, some aren't the same. There's our salt, for example, um, <laughs> all the way down at the bottom. So. I'd bring salt. I'd bring salt. If I'm going to cook anything <laughs> and it's not great, go chuck yeah. a bit of salt in there. It'll be yes. fine. Yeah. 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 <laughs> oh, and then, this is fantastic. Yeah, I think this is also just a cool, cool visual in the sense that um, there is no right choice uh, in the sense True. as long as you don't choose a Scotch auger, a Scotch eyed auger, which <laughs> I don't really know what that is, but apparently it's bad. Like it's not a you're going to end up in, in a lovely place because yeah, of that. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I, I do true. think 
Slingshot is a really interesting story. There's, um, I think it was the contestant who lasted a hundred days had a slingshot. And so it was this like, Oh, well he's the outlier. So that's pushing that, that one out that got, way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Or for example, like whoever brought soap, um, what place third. So like, that's not a typical clean, item, yeah, but yeah. they lasted a long yeah. time with that one. But, um, I think the, so again, one of the questions I wanted to answer was, is there like a, a professional lean? Does that give you more, um, kind of benefit? Uh, yeah. Or something like a head start into something. Yeah. So yeah. I, I looked, so the, the data behind this, which we can pop into real quick and I'll, I'll oh, also yeah. show you one of the other cool things about Sigma. Um, so mm -hmm. this, uh, for example, or this visual we can see is um, splitting out their profession by whether it leans outdoors, which is the the ones that we talked about where it's like a, they're like a hunting guide in Alaska. Like that's a, their profession is something that's yeah. outdoors. Something that's resilience or leans resilience is like the military or like a doctor or like yes. things that are like nice. mentally yeah. taxing yeah. maybe yeah. or mentally or physically taxing. And then you've got this other category, which was like, there's one one of the first seasons where I think a guy was like a tax accountant and like just did this on the weekend or you know something <laughs> like that. But um, I'm gonna quick go to go to this this source um, so we can see. This will also show you how oh, wow. uh, how oh. great the the lineage can be. I but, love a good lineage um, chart. Like, <laughs> I, I know <laughs> this is like crazy and spidery towards the end, and it, I think it can look intimidating, but. The thing is, when you're debugging, you're quite focused. You're not looking at this whole thing. Yes. You're just looking for like yep. where one thing tracks back yeah. so you can go fix the problem. Yes. And yeah, I think here you're starting with the and data you can... set, right? And you, you're, yeah, yep. you, you just, you, you have the, all the tables that you built along the way. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I can see a join in the middle there. And then, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, wow. Like, okay, so that's you bringing together two other bits of information with what you've got. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Okay, yeah. And see, yeah. this makes total sense to me. You can you can just follow it all the way through. Yeah. Yes. Perfect. Yeah. What you see is what you get. What you yeah. see is, yeah. is what you you understand for it, and you can see how like you don't have to to read any documentation to to understand how this is yeah. like how the approach is or how the person is approaching approaching yeah. this. But um, does, so does it get other... to calculation? Yeah. Sorry, before we does it leave the cal does it get to go down to calculation level or is it because these all look like base tables and I know. Um, one of the things DBT added is like column level lineage, right? I don't know if, because mm -hmm. the thing about Tableau, I'm just asking from a Tableau selfish perspective, is like, mm -hmm. it's so painful to go down mm -hmm. to column level lineage in Tableau without paying mm -hmm. for more tools or scraping a mm -hmm. ton of data. Yeah. Yeah. So it does not right now. That is one of the things that I've talked to them about uh, there you go. adding. I, yeah. I hope to see Good it company. one day. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I was excited when they added the the show controls, which are, are like filters okay. and parameters. Wow. So, you, okay. so this is really helpful if you're trying to like troubleshoot. Maybe this filter is not working What's the way you thought something. it was. You yeah. can see, yeah, 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 you can see where it's sourced from and, and the targets. Right now, I only have one target on here, but um, yeah, like right. that helps you at least cross some of those things oh, off the list. So hold on, um, hold on. Could that yeah. filter have targets in multiple places? Mm -hmm. So this this kind of thing in Tableau where you have like a a cro like a a data source filter, but the problem mm -hmm. with Tableau is that, that like a data source filter means it's it's it's, it's at the very beginning. What this mm -hmm. suggests is that filter could act part of the way through the cycle, but not the, like yeah, that's yep. really cool. And being able yes. to see it in the lineage means yeah yeah okay, that's really cool. So you could connect yeah. it there, but you could also connect it, I guess, anything downstream. Um, mm -hmm. uh, if yep. that makes sense, and, yeah. Um, Sigma's built on parent-child relationships, so anything you yeah. do in the parent element is going to cascade down to that child element or you know anything mm -hmm. that's sourced from it. So here I've got all of my uh, filters targeted to my base data just because then like I have one source. Uh, this is a very, since this is a very simple analysis, um, mm -hmm. I really only have the one data source. It just was like clean and easy. Um, yeah. But you could also, um, as you said, you could do a, quote unquote data source filter in the, this is my CSV that I uploaded. So I could filter this one. And then all of my, my join would have been um, on those, those filtered results. 
Yep. What's um, one of the cool things that having this um, ability to do data modeling and filtering or have your end user interact with it is that all, all in the same place is that it can be incredibly flexible. So I can right. ch basically change my join criteria or how my join works Wow. Live, like based on, on what the end user wants. And so that can lead to a lot of performance implications um, yeah. or performance benefits. Uh, and it can also yeah. provide a lot of flexibility in saying, you know, hey, I want to pull this or I want to compare this or, or build these things things together. So yeah. very exciting. Wow. This is so fresh. I like <laughs> my, one of the uh, earlier on last week. So for everyone's context, like I've been working with Sigma for, I think, probably two months at, at this at this point like in in detail and one of the things mm -hmm. i realized is that um i see why tableau are doing the fourth wave if that makes sense because if you carry on with the approach they've had with, with a tool that was really fundamentally designed you know like 20 years ago and you, you run with that concept while the concept i think still holds true and holds well with tableau mm -hmm. there is definitely a greater opportunity to reimagine things like this um, in a new way, rather than shoehorning them into the current experience. And I also imagine that behind the scenes, shoehorning it into the current experience creates tons of technical debt because you have to mm -hmm. go with, you, you have to go with the incumbent sort of methodology. Whereas if you start mm -hmm. from scratch, and I think Sigma probably benefits massively from this, which is yep. they can think of how to do things right, the right, like right from the beginning. And they've, it's probably, they've probably left themselves lots of great opportunities to build on like the mm -hmm. stuff they've built, right? So like they can come back to something and know that they've not, you know, innovated themselves into a corner as it were, which I think is definitely the case in, in some parts of Tableau, yeah. Yes, yeah. Tech debt is a real thing in BI yeah. as well as yeah. BI platforms. Yeah. And yeah. and as we talked about earlier, also like, um, you know, standing on the shoulder of giants, being inspired by, or, you know, there's a lot of good solutions out there and Sigma's just kind of taken the best of, of what they've seen and putting it, putting it all together. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so the, the other good. thing I wanted to, to highlight with this one um, that we haven't gotten a chance to talk about yet is input tables. So oh, yes. um, this is the ability to write data to your warehouse. Um, and before anyone asks, you can do it in a very controlled environment. You can set permissions <laughs> and roll level security and all that stuff. So don't worry. Who wants control? Who wants control, <laughs> yeah. Katrina? We just want to yes. create a dumpster fire of a database here. Come on. Let us just do it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Of course, yeah. like I, um, I, can I just push back on something, which is like, yes. why does everyone think that the minute you write back to something, it's just immediately going to cause chaos? Like, yeah, immediately like, terrible. Like, <laughs> and it's not immediately terrible. Like we live yeah. in a world where things like Notion, Monday.com, all these things that just require inputs left, right and center. And I always say mm -hmm. to businesses, would you rather they put it in those kinds of places or would you mm -hmm. rather they put it in the place where that's supposed to live? Your database and i was like yes pick one yep because it will happen anyway like if you don't let them mm -hmm. write it back to the database they'll just put it in excel and yes i think this <laughs> is a better place at least here you get to see the mess and handle the mess and tame the mess <laughs> however much yes. it might be elsewhere yeah you just don't know yeah 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 and and that's why uh sigma created input tables was to have that flexibility but governed um yeah in, in the, the book I, I wrote, I talk about like creating playgrounds for people instead of, uh, you know, like you don't want anyone like running around in the streets, like doing crazy stuff where <laughs> you can't govern it, but yeah. you also like can't give your kid a seesaw and expect them to be happy with that for the rest of their life. There has yeah. to be like some <laughs> flexibility. And so yeah. this this um, this workbook with all of the, the levers that you can pull with uh, security and flex the flexibility, um, it provides a playground for people to nice. explore and work with data, but in a safe and secure environment. So yeah, it's a exactly. great, great mix. So, That's really cool. Yeah. That's really cool. And I think this feels like one of the things I think I've said to you before is I feel like Sigma is about workflows. Like you mm -hmm. build something, mm -hmm. you you bring the insight, but then something happens after that. And the thing that happens after that, to allow it to reach its natural conclusion, it needs to be a workflow that closes the loop, yep. as it were. And I think yep. from what I've seen of Sigma, Sigma enables teams to build and 
let those workflows happen mm -hmm. in an analytical mm -hmm. context. That's fundamentally to me what Sigma is. I know Sigma sort of uses a slightly different thing. And I think I've, I've messaged you before being like, why can't Sigma just, <laughs> just treat itself like a workflow tool? It would be so much better than whatever marketing they've got on the homepage at the moment. But yeah, no, I, I just fundamentally believe like this mm -hmm. is the thing that stands out to me that's different from the tablet experience because the tablet experience is curated, governed, all of this lovely stuff. Mm -hmm. But this is what we've said you're going to look at. So you look at it, right? Sigma mm -hmm. is very much different. S S Sigma empowers everyone to drill into what they need to, but mm -hmm. critically input tables lets, you to, lets people complete those cycles, whatever those need yep. to be, update yep. some information. Uh, change some stock numbers, uh, send an instruction to someone, uh, complete an order. All, all of these things can be done here mm -hmm. and they stay in mm -hmm. context. Yeah. Yeah. And I can give you a, a preview of Ooh. one of those applications Ooh. that I, that yeah. I've made. Um, I think it's this one. Yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah, I've got this uh, demo kind of workflow set up. Um, this is a pet supply company because again, I've, I love my pets. Um, mm -hmm. And so this is an example of how Sigma is using the ability to combine the right back functionality with the actions and the interactivity from their workbooks or um, yeah. you know, kind of that end user contribution to create something that is meaningful and, and, and not only solves a data question, but it produces data, it updates data, it fits within the normal workflow of, yeah. of a business or of an organization. So um, just real quick, these are some, some example sales. I will also say that um, this demo is intended to be a something that you would update every day. And since it right. is a demo, I have not been updating <laughs> it every day. So some of the numbers might look a little funky, but yeah. uh, we'll, we'll get there. Get, we can get the idea of these things, but again, just, just showing how, um, you know, let's say we've got some, some sales and some average profits. We can see how those things are kind of trending, um, as well as seeing like our, our top ranked items. And then we can oh, look paging. at, um, mm. yes, paginating, uh, good. through different things. And then again, just some like production metrics. So we were not doing so great when I wasn't updating the demo, but now, August is, is a good Today, month for us. Today, it's doing really well. I wonder <laughs> yeah. why. <laughs> yeah. Um, good. So there's two different examples of, of kind of, uh, there's two examples of how input tables work in this workbook. So this first one is going to be an order form. So this is a list of all of the items that we have available for sale, um, you know, in our, in our warehouse or whatever, and some information about it. I can type in a number that I want. So I can have 65 here. I could say um, I wanted to, oops, I'm, this might be, this is, as we were talking about earlier, creating a, uh, a secure environment or secure playground. So that was oh, yeah. one of the settings, which I had right. not set <laughs> to be in published <laughs> mode. Good. So good, there's good, a demo good, of that. We, we bumped into it. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. So, if I have the right permissions and if it is set up right. uh, in this way, go. I can click yeah. edit and then I could type in and say, you know, hey, I want to order um, 50 bird leashes. I don't yeah. I don't know what Whatever that, that is, is exactly, but yeah, bird um, leash, I can yeah. put that that in there. And then I can also click this button and have it add to my order. So we'll okay. put all of these and then we'll give it a second to load. I wonder right. if this is going to be added in draft mode. Is this another one? All right. I got to edit this one too. There you go. There Boom. Go. Let me make sure that this other one is set. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No we, worries. Before we dive in. Set. Yeah. But it's interesting. Like this is, it is this sort of the guardrails doing their job if, in many ways. So, yes. <laughs> um, yeah, you can't yeah. just because you want to update Katrina doesn't mean you can. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Someone needs All to right, give you let's... the permission. There we go. There you go. Now it, so now we can straight see, away. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, that they they are added to our our order. Great. Um, and then wow. um, we would get it's like a, a shopping you know, cart, isn't it? A total. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And then the idea would be uh, you kind of click place order and then it would clear that order form for you. Oh, You'd be able yeah. to look at your previous orders. 
So that's the the one persona where it's, um, you know, hey, I'm trying to place new orders. And then yeah. the second persona or the second use case is the the warehouse manager who's trying to understand, like, well, what do we need to, to make? Um, so part of this scenario is understanding that, like, hey, if if Tim orders 50 bird leashes, we can't just go out and create 50 bird leashes. Maybe for yeah. whatever reason, we have to create them at 100 at a time. Yeah. So if Tim orders 50, now I have 50 in stock. So if next week Tim comes in and orders 25, I don't actually need to produce anything because I have some on hand. Yes. So all the stuff on the back end in Sigma is uh, calculating how much do you have on hand of every product. And then if you need to produce something, wow. then it, it pops onto this row and it says, hey, based on these orders, um, so we can scroll all the way down to the bottom. Um, we can see, you know, all of the items that we would need to produce, yeah. um, how many batches, what's that standard size, what is that going to um, yeah. equate to? And yeah. then um, I can say, okay, we are, are working on um, whatever uh, product ID this is. And then uh, as a manager, done. I can come in and I can click this box and say, yep, these these ones are completed. And now I can move this one and this one into process. So mm -hmm. note that we've got some uh, data validation in here yeah, yeah. versus a checkbox versus on the order form. I could just type in free free numbers on things. So multiple types of input, not just mm -hmm. uh, like records and yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, and and again, it's creating that that safe and secure playground. It's not. It can be a free for all, but it doesn't have to be a free for all. You can create whatever bounds or limits you want based on mm -hmm. your use case or what makes sense for your data. And then um, and then those items would pop up in here in our production. So we can oops, scroll all the way down to the bottom. And I think there this was is, the one yeah. that we were, yeah, that we yeah. were looking at. Yeah, so sure. now yeah. this goes all the way back up to the top of the circle. And the next time that someone orders this product, we'll probably have a bunch on hand because uh, yeah, we made exactly. a lot today. Yeah, you made, so, made a ton more. Yeah. Yes. Wow. So, so it's a proper workflow, like as I as yeah. I hinted, and and I think there's lots of customization in that. This this workflow mm -hmm. is built in a specific way, but you know mm -hmm. every every company, even in the same industry or vertical, will be slightly different. So they'll tailor this yes. to suit their own things. And I think there's also a nice thing here, which is because this is I think this was connected to something like Snowflake, right? Mm -hmm. There is a I think there's a theme in modern analytics where you have not just um, you know one tool accessing the data in your analytics stack you tend to have many other things you could have um i think i've previously talked to you about retool right like a, it's a very similar mm -hmm. kind of tool but more developer code focused you mm -hmm. could have a retool workflow that picks up on these orders and these actions and pings something else to someone elsewhere mm -hmm. who looks after like slightly more intricate parts so because the commonality is the database, in this case, Snowflake, you know, more modern databases, you're not precluded from what, like building those kinds of workflows separate to mm -hmm. this. But because everyone's working the same view, um, the context remains the same for everyone, which is fantastic. So, yeah. 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 And and you can, as you, you called out, like, you can keep this data only accessible within this workbook. You can make it accessible somewhere else in Sigma or outside of Sigma, all of those things. And again, it goes goes back to what we've talked about several times around how Sigma is um, creating a new approach of how things like yeah. should work or how yeah. we would actually want them to work. So yeah. instead of having to go, okay, well, let me go to, to system A to order things and let me go to system B to figure out, calculate what needs to be produced and then system C to have my production records and track all those things. And now, yeah. now I have to to pay someone or, or hire a team to take all my data and put it together and make sure that it's all lined up and the math works out correctly. It's like, you could just do it here just to, yeah. in one spot and that's it. Exactly. No, no need for all tricks or any of that mess. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's what I call all yeah. tricks at the moment. It is a bit of a mess, but anyway, um, <laughs> I digress. We're not here to dunk on all tricks. Mm -hmm. um, this has been a really eye-opening experience. I've I've really enjoyed this. Um, we've, we've probably got a time for a couple of questions. So, um, yeah. Um, firstly, sort of firstly to close off this sort of Sigma uh, thing, if people want to try Sigma, um, mm -hmm. yeah, how do they do that? How do they? I think we, you and I have alluded to this off recording, but. Uh, let's yeah. touch on it for the benefit of everyone like yep. during the recording if i want to try sigma 
What do I do? Yeah. So there's two different ways you can try Sigma. The first one is to just go to their website and sign up for a demo. It's a two week mm -hmm. trial. You get access to anything and everything in there. Yeah. Um, sometimes that's enough time for people. Sometimes it's not. Um, the yeah. other thing that I do want to call out is Workout Wednesday, yeah. which yeah. some Tableau folks might be be familiar with. We do have a Sigma version of that. And yeah. if you, um, so we'll click on on this one and then you can sign up to be added to like the Sigma Workout Wednesday environment. And then yep. you you can have like a persisting account. It's not a full access. So like you don't get access to all the admin things because uh, we need yeah. some of that stuff on the back end. But yeah. you will be able to, to continue to try uh, new stuff, to do new challenges and yeah. explore basically everything that we saw in the workbooks today. Oh, nice. um, and then as well as um, some of the data modeling stuff you'll, you'll have access to. So I mean, this is is the the primary spot for like poking around and playing yeah. and uh, learning Sigma. And then I do also just want to call out we have a uh, user meetup as well. Um, oh, nice. As I mentioned before, uh, the Tableau community was very influential in my career. That's how I learned uh, Tableau. So I wanted to kind of bring that to to the Sigma space as well. I nice. also just wanted to find other. Sigma nerds and, and share yeah, yeah. like yeah. again like look at my pretty bar chart like look at the things that that I've made or the cool things that I've done so we meet yeah. virtually monthly um the next one um so it's it's typically every uh second Wednesday kind of around right. it's 11 a.m central 9 a.m pacific don't know what time that is in London <laughs> or for, for you Tim but um, oh there's that's out there as calculators well. out there yes yeah, so, absolutely <laughs> yeah yeah. yeah, and I think uh, you, you've been very humble about this, but you wrote a book, right? So um, I did. <laughs> that, that is also quite a good, um, I, I will say this, there are lots of people in the tablet community who do prefer the written form, specifically mm -hmm. a textbook or something like a book. So I will call out your book here because I think it's a, it's a really good, um, there's, there's something about books in where the author does actually think about the chronology of what they're putting down in a way that a blog and videos and all of that stuff you find on the internet, even user groups and, and say, so, you don't get chronology with all of those. And so for some mm -hmm. people, chronology is, is sort of a, a big uh, thing that opens up the experience of a piece of software to them. And a book tends to have that, you know, purely in the, the way the chapters are structured. So I would highly encourage your book as a starting point. Um, um, uh, yeah, I think I'll, I'll sort of let you pitch your book uh, to, to, to yeah. the audience a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I will say that my book is free for download. So definitely yeah. rec recommend it. Um, if you start. go to Sigma's website and resources and eBooks, um, it is called Spreadsheets for Dummies. Um, yes. So as the, the title indicates, uh, it is all about uh, how Sigma is taking the spreadsheet into the modern uh, data stack. So we talk about the history of why spreadsheets are still a fundamental and useful tool and product and should continue to be a part of everyone's analytic journey. But then yep. there also needs to be more to it. You can't just Correct. have tables. You need those visuals. You need those workflows. You need data manipulations, all those things. And how Sigma is, um, again, taking taking the, the spreadsheet into the modern environment. I yeah. will say it is um, the the audience or or uh, just so that, that folks have a good understanding of it. It is not intended to be a technical how to or, yeah. you know, learn Sigma. It really is. What is Sigma? What are they trying to do? Exactly. Um, but it's it's a. I think it's a good read. I hope people like it. <laughs> <But>. <laughs> well, I'll I'll give this point of context. My my first um, let's say commercial activity is Tableau Tim was with LinkedIn Learning. And mm -hmm. it was a course on LinkedIn Learning, which is still available now. I've actually updated it just recently, called Everybody's Introduction to Tableau. And mm -hmm. one of the biggest fears I had was when I was pitching this to LinkedIn, I said, Listen, the problem with all your stuff is it's too technical out of the game. Like if you think about it just for one second, somewhere like LinkedIn, everyone is aspirational. Like people, people mm -hmm. are coming across new tools for the first time. So if you just go in hard on the technical thing, you kind of vilify this perception that this is too hard. This is, mm -hmm. this is not for me because the technical stuff is dry, can be difficult and so on. So <laughs> my actual, yes. like, you know, course, I said, number one, you don't need to open the software once to complete this course. Uh, number two, uh, if you only get past like the first five 
lessons in this course. Perfect. That is all you need to get through. And if you finish this and watch to the end, then you, my friend, should definitely be looking at some of the more technical courses because you, you, you sort of crossed the gauntlet. You're still interested mm -hmm. and you've gone mm -hmm. there. So you know what? Like what you said, not technical. I think that is a yep. perfect sales pitch to everyone, yes. especially my audience who's zero to 60, right? Yep. More often than not, not looking to go too technical into things to start, to start off with theory concept um mm -hmm. yeah all that stuff yeah. leads and then and, the other stuff can follow yeah um i'm gonna stop sharing my screen and yeah go for it yeah 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 um on that note I, I will tell you a story about writing writing the book um so you know i i wrote it uh on my nights and weekends and one of the the weekends i had my husband read it just as like another set of eyes as yeah. i mentioned he's technical but not in any way a, a yeah, yeah. based person or field. whatever and then uh, the next weekend, we were talking about, uh, you know, oh, what do you what do you want to do this weekend? I think it was like a Friday. And I was yeah. like, oh, I want to rewrite this chapter and then, and then have you read it again. And he looks at me and he's like, do I have to? And I was like, what? <laughs> you don't want to read my book about spreadsheets <laughs> again? <laughs> so yeah, we all have those moments, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He did a very good job of supporting me because he loves me, course, but I understand. <laughs> like, yeah. I get it. It's about yeah. spreadsheets. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's a, yeah. I have those moments with my wife. I was like, she tries to explain to people what um what I do, and she's like, you yeah. work with computers, and I'm like, Bree, don't kill me right now. I do more than work with computers. Like <laughs> everyone works with computers, but anyway. Yes. Um. Yep. Yes. So, um, check out the book. I think it's it's super valuable resource. Um, I think you've given people a great sort of jumping off point to go start learning, work out when is days, get your reps in, get familiar with the tool, bring a fresh mind, don't bring your philosophies from before. I think if you are, you know, currently a Tableau user, Sigma is a great sort of adjacent tool, definitely. It's it's going to be a much softer landing than someone like Power BI, definitely, for, for 100%. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So if you're going to choose to learn something new, give it a chance. I think it's it's really worthwhile your time. And I think in the current context with the fourth wave coming, it's also super important because I do think, I do think Tableau is going to go somewhere with the fourth wave. Does That does overlap some of the ideas around um, what Sigma mm -hmm. is doing. The difference is Tableau has got to bring its entire platform with it. So it's kind of, yeah. it's, it's kind yep. of got a bit more of a burden to bring a completely different paradigm to it. But it, it can't be as what I would say light, um, yeah, not light, light-hearted. Uh, sort of an unfair statement for Sigma. Sigma is powerful because it's not burdened by its breadth and its depth and mm. all of the other stuff. It's mm -hmm. working towards that, but the the benefit of that is that out of the gate, it has all that power and it's fresh. Mm -hmm. When Tableau does its fourth wave it will likely not achieve the breadth and depth of the Tableau platform because of this very problem. It has to work towards those things, whereas Sigma has yep. got a more yep. open canvas, more open road, so it can actually take mm -hmm. a more organic path to get there. And I think mm -hmm. it actually might end up being a, a much better route. So, uh, and, and I'll just add that there there are plenty of things that I, I wish Sigma did better. I'm excited <laughs> for iterations We'll have you back. Sigma. We'll have you back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll and talk I, more about this. I, I think that that is also, um, you know, one of the things that you, you, as you mentioned, like having a fresh perspective, like keep in mind that Sigma hasn't been around for as long yeah. as Tableau. Like yeah, there, yeah. there are things that are coming out. Um, I think about like the input tables that we saw um, in there. The, the first time that I saw Sigma, I was like, oh, they should like, yes, input tables make sense there. And then um, they've been slowly releasing new updates on the, on yeah. those things or slowly, fastly kind of depends on your perspective, but like, they're consistently making updates um, to the platform and making yeah. changes, iterations. They're really receptive to feedback and understanding like what is your specific use case and how can we make it better, faster, easier. The what you see is what you get. So definitely if Sigma doesn't fit your use case right now, still keep an eye on it. Like Ooh, there's a lot of things amazing. that are coming um, and it's going to be great. Um, yeah. so we have, we have a closing tradition, uh, that mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's a very new tradition. It's not something I've been doing for a while. I borrowed it from, um, Stephen Bartlett, Diary of CEO, where previous guest asked an excess a question. The previous guest I had on, um, was showcasing her portfolio, it was Judith Becker. And she asked you, uh, as you're the next guest, 
if you had unlimited resources and access to any um, analytics tool available to you on the, in the world, what would be the project that you would do with all of that sort of access? Yeah. Uh, so we haven't touched on this, but I trained Brazilian jiu-jitsu. And okay. it's a, um, so it, if you're unfamiliar with it, it's a martial art. It's kind of like right. wrestling and judo combined. Yeah. And one of it, it has a belt system. So you go white, blue, purple, brown, black. And there's this saying or this like, you know, people like to make up statistics. And I, I've heard anywhere from uh, 1% to 0.1% of folks <laughs> that start jujitsu get their black belt. And right. I want to I know that. <laughs> that would right. be my, my question of like, how many people actually make it through from white belt to black belt? Um, yeah. How long does it typically take? There's a, an adage or kind of these, the standard is two years in between each belt. So anywhere yeah. from 10 to 12, 15 years is normal. Wow. And I just was like, is it actually normal? And then with that, the other question that I, I really want to know is the, the 10,000 hours kind of concept where oh. is it actually 10,000 hours? Like there's plenty of folks that are in my gym who it's like they come in and they, things just click for them. And then other times it's like, you have to like, you're like, take your right hand and grab their left hand. And you're like, they're uh, your other right hand. Nope. Nope. They're, yeah, no still your other right hand. Not, <laughs> yeah. Not, not clicking at all. You know? Yeah. It's an and, interesting one. Yeah. So that's what I, I would just basically do an analysis of, of jujitsu and, and trends and stuff like that. Yeah. And there's some really interesting technology around that as well. Like, you know, if, if you've got unlimited resources during the gymnastics, the World Olympic gymnastics this year, they have a four point camera system that mm. simultaneously mm -hmm. judges the gymnastics. Uh, I think it's like four of the apparatus. And what it does is it's not used for scoring. The judges do the scoring. But if there's mm -hmm. a dispute or there is not an agreement amongst the judges, they call mm -hmm. on this AI system and the AI system reduces the movements of the gymnast to a linear model. So oh. you basically see like a, yeah, so can... a line model of the athlete doing the moves. Yeah. And then hmm. when you do that, it's actually able to measure difficulty, complexity, mm -hmm. rotations mm -hmm. and movements. And so it, it, you can all confer on some actual data points that say that looked exceptional, but what yes. is exceptional in terms of numbers <laughs> Oh, yes. it's that they got a seven score this here one, versus yeah. an eight score there, right? Yeah. Like, and the, the benefit of doing this in parallel with judging is that as the judges judge and they use the system, there's a bit of a feedback loop because mm -hmm. uh, they can now take all the data from the Olympics this year, uh, you know, where everyone's agreed the judging was good and then apply it to the AI model. So now the AI model will go, hmm, there's a little bit of discrepancy between the judges. What mm -hmm. is it this, what, what, what was it that was actually good? Oh, okay. It's this mm -hmm. small factor here that made this move more aesthetic. So therefore, you know, yeah. you can actually measure it. So that would also be a really kind of good supporting data to, to, to your journey, because I think mm -hmm. it's combat is very, um, I, I, I don't know. Is it fair to say jujitsu is a, is like a, it's obviously a sport, but is it a form of combat or is it, is martial art? I don't know. It's yeah. Like uh, we're going <laughs> deep here, but like, what is, yeah. yeah what is jujitsu? Is it a martial arts? Is it like what? Yeah. How would you classify yeah. it in, yes. in the sporting <laughs> parameters? Mm -hmm. um, so there's no striking or there's no kicking, no punching in jujitsu. Right. So I don't think it, it like, there's typically like folks think of like karate or Taekwondo. That's kind of yeah. one side. Jujitsu yeah. is all grappling. Um, so right. it is the ability. So it's, that's why I would say like it's judo plus wrestling. So it's the ability to take your opponent down and then pin them and create some sort of submission where either you're trying to like push a joint in a direction it doesn't want to go <laughs> or um, restricting blood flow. So they will pass out, <laughs> you know, like those yeah. are the options. Um, so, yeah. you, so you get a tap out. Yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. So there is a little bit of, um, Ah, oh, there's there is a subjective element to that because yeah, the, like the thresholds at which someone taps out can vary from individual to individual, like all yes. of those things. Yes. And so, could you become really good at this because you've had an easier run up to like getting to where you need to? If that makes sense, like <laughs> because obviously over thousands and thousands of thousands of battles, that that probably gets normalized, right? There's probably a pain. Mm -hmm pain level that is average for everyone um, and you're mm -hmm. going to meet your match one day but anyway i digress 
lots of um <laughs> lots of interesting forms of analysis you could do um I, I guess that also leaves it to you to pose a question to the next mm -hmm. guest so um mm -hmm. i typically answer this question now but then the next guest would answer it next so it's kind of a question to me but it's also yeah. a question to yeah. the next guest as well so yes over to you okay. i don't know if you have one Put your uh so my question would be what's the most fun project you've ever been a part of whether it's like a really cool impact or a great team or you learn something really cool yeah it's it's a tough one um I'd love to say the most fun project I've been on was because of the technology or the type of analysis I was doing or whatever. Like in reality, I just don't think that's the case. I, I think, mm -hmm. I think you can have fun in projects, even though the use case you're working on isn't necessarily the most exciting. <laughs> um, uh -huh. And so if, if I drill into that, the most fun project I work with was, um, it was in a, oh, I have to be careful because I can't name the client, but it was in a um, a company that looks after the UK electric infrastructure. There's only one, so you can figure out who it is, but that's how <laughs> I have to describe them. Um, <laughs> and it was actually the team. It was a team that made it super fun. Mm -hmm. um, I was the most experienced person on the project from a Tableau perspective. And the, the fun mm -hmm. thing was everyone else was picking up Tableau for the first time. And it's kind of the classic mm -hmm. consulting thing where, um, I think I was working at Accenture at this time and, uh, you know, everyone's staff from the project was just thrown into it. And I was just like, how, how am I the most experienced person at Tableau? And everyone was really good and passionate, but I would have thought like you need at least two or three people who, with experience. But anyway, this team, like we gelled, we, we just bonded and it was just fun, even though like we weren't necessarily like, you know, kicking ass necessarily, we were building something that was pretty much well done it wasn't like that innovative we could have followed like a manual on how to do it yes there were some challenges with the with the client yes there was some sort of unique context but there wasn't anything that you know you couldn't have seen it a user group in a different context so it was just the people and i think i always go back to people because in the projects where i work solo and i'm really proud of my technical achievements there's no one there to see it there's no one there to appreciate it annoying as that may be and like yes. <laughs> and and i'm also not the person to sort of blow my own trump and like, hey guys did you like, can i just say <laughs> that yes. project i just did i just kicked <laughs> ass like no one says that no one does that at least at least i don't I'm, i tried i tried to be at least that uh, if the client says that great happy days mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. you know from a, from a team perspective i think when you're in a team you know when someone's knocking out the park and it's it's mm -hmm. easy to celebrate and that camaraderie can actually help you all reach to another level because it's kind of like a good dopamine hit, uh, especially if you're mm -hmm. not feeding yourself the the endorphins as it were so mm -hmm. <laughs> i think yeah i think it was that project um it's definitely not the it's definitely not the most impactful um thing i've done the most impactful mm -hmm. thing i've done I think would have actually been more recently at Aimpoint um, working in the insurance sector that, you know, I can't go into details again, but nonetheless, that to me was the most impactful thing. So you could kind of cut mm -hmm. this into different verticals, but I think anything either related to working in a great team or delivering a great outcome would be the sort of two stratospheres that I, I sort of had to, but mm -hmm. I, I look forward to seeing what the next person uh, that I interview answers that question. Cause I think it's an interesting one. Lots of data analysts, learning analytics, probably don't think of fun as being what I've said. They think of it <laughs> as being kind of something more, more visibly fun, more like idealistic, mm -hmm. like, oh, we went to a cool location or I was being a busy and nomad doing work in, I don't know, some amazing country whilst, you know, doing my nine to five. But no, no I'm, mm -hmm. I'm a boring old man. Um, uh, I enjoy, <laughs> enjoy great colleagues Simple and things. good outcomes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So listen, uh, Katrina, thank you so much. Um, it's been it's yeah. been fantastic. We've been going for two hours. Obviously, there's there's been a bit of back and forth and a little bit of yeah. editing I'm going to have to do. But yeah, no, um, it's been really good. I think lots of people will have learned a ton of great things, not just about Sigma, but also about Tableau as we talk about the mm -hmm. context of where Tableau is going. And yeah, like uh, I encourage people to go find you on your platforms. You didn't mention it much again. You're very humble. Data Katrina, <laughs> this is your sort of YouTube a brand yeah. as it were and uh, you've got the book as well um you've shown mm -hmm. people how to access that for free um you're also at aimpoint so if you're looking mm -hmm. to kick ass with sigma come to aimpoint obviously i'd be <laughs> mad not to say that myself um yeah like i think there's so much great opportunity in analytics and 
one of the reasons I had you on is because, yeah, at any point we do have lots of people just talent, super talented at everything they do, and they are the best in their field. You with Sigma, I know when I've talked to Luke, the two Lukes at Sigma and various other places, Sigma, and I've mentioned you, they're like, oh, yeah, love it. So you are you are the, uh, you know, you're the visionary equivalent over at Sigma, and I, I think Sigma is going to be doing great things. So if people are following you, then I'm sure they'll, they'll stay in touch with that. So, um, yeah, to keep in touch with yeah. Katrina. <laughs> yeah, well, I appreciate you having me on. It was a really fun conversation. Uh, I will say it's it's sort of, I was telling my husband about how this is a surreal moment for me as I <laughs> started my Tableau or like when I, as I mentioned, I knew that I was never going to be a Tableau visionary, those sorts right. of things. And when I started working in Sigma, I saw the opportunity for those things. And as we've talked about before, I, yeah. I had this like moment where I was I'm going to be the, the, this person, the, this person, the tableau Tim of Sigma. <laughs> and so here I am, like. You're here on the channel. You are, you've done it. <laughs> yeah. you've, you've closed the loop on the channel. Yes. So that's, yeah. that's and fantastic. <laughs> I, I will say as, as you called out, like Sigma's new, there's lots of opportunities. So if anyone else wants to be a tableau Tim of Sigma, please yeah. come join. We would love to hear your voice in it. And the community is, is growing and I'm, and we're trying to, to get things moving and growing, but there's always space for, for you to come contribute whatever you're interested in doing. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Sigma Sam, Sigma whatever's like, get involved. Yes. <laughs> Your name does not have to start with S. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Clearly. Yeah. Like I, uh, mine was just a lucky piece of alliteration. So yes, um, we'll, we'll, we'll be grateful for that. But anyway, um, mm -hmm. Katrina, thank you so much. Yeah. Um, and yeah, hopefully we'll be back again soon. and We'll talk more about Sigma in, in, uh, in the near future. Sounds good. Looking forward to it.